What is the third thing you want to know? So the third thing is how would you go about another revenue stream that requires less investment for people, mm -hmm. both in their time. This is like a year long commitment to be in the community, like thinking about changing it to be quarterly, but for now mm -hmm. it's a year long community, yep. year long community experience. So what's like a, a, how to think about adding another tier that is like less investment time-wise for them and mm -hmm. financially yeah. at the step, hopefully to them buying that or right. also just another revenue stream. So let me ask you a couple of questions first. So right now is the only product yeah. you offer the $1,800 annual course, or do you have other things you offer as well? I do consulting with that. Okay. Yeah. But from a product standpoint, it's basically that. Okay. Yeah. Do you have people, and I think there probably is, but I'm just curious, why do you think there's an opportunity here? Or do you think there's an opportunity here? It sounds like you do. Why do you think there's an opportunity here for a lower price thing? Are people telling you something? Are they telling you what they want? Are there people saying, oh, I don't want to commit to a year? Like in just casual conversations with either buyers or non-buyers, are you picking up on anything that they're saying to you? Or is this more just sort of your hunch that there's an opportunity there? Yeah, it's a little bit of a hunch, but it's also, yep. yeah, that people who end up not joining the course, like people who apply and then decide yep. not to join, often they're saying like, oh, I don't have time to do this, or I'm doing some other That's the friction program. we talked about with it seems like a lot of work. Yeah. Or yeah. a lot of time. That's the friction. Yeah. So it's like, because it, it is a lot of work, like you are. Yeah. Then they're like deciding to build this kind of business. That can be... I don't know, bad's not the right word, but it can be a bad or for us. It can be a negative or it can be a positive, right? Because the truth is the people that are going, oh, this sounds like a lot of work, chances are they weren't going to do what it takes to succeed anyway. So it might be yeah. better that it's scaring them. Like the fact that it's scaring them off isn't necessarily a bad thing, even though it may financially seem like it's a bad thing. But ultimately you want the people that pay you to get the results. And I've found that over the years just with individual consulting clients where I've gotten much better at going, this person's not going to do this. And like, I don't want to take and have them not do it, right? But that's not necessarily a bad thing. When people, the people who are buying, do you think, and it's interesting because I know you said the positioning of it, people are maybe more willing to pay more money for a course than a community. So there, there's a messaging component of it. But do you think most people are buying for the course or the community? Like, what do you think is the stronger draw to the people that buy? I think it's shifting little by little. I think mm -hmm. it's more the course and then shifting towards the community. And I hope that it will. Okay. And again, we're going to throw suggestions out at you, but it doesn't necessarily mean that, oh, you should do it this way or that way. But one thing you could certainly think about is you go, you know what, I'm going to have a high price. I'm going to have a high price course and my low price product's going to be the community. If you feel like, so that would be an entry, again, you might have to rejigger how you do some things, and I'm not suggesting necessarily doing this, but that would be one easy way without creating additional work for yourself to go, I'm going to open this community up to more people. I'm going to pull the course out of it, right? And so you can pay X amount to get the course and the community, or you can just come into our community, start to learn some stuff. Maybe that makes them more likely to ultimately get the course. So that would be one really basic, simple way to do this. Another thing to think about, and I did not create this, and I've heard different people say different versions of it, but when it comes to products and pricing, there's this concept called the value ladder. There's no specific numbers, but the example I heard was basically a 10x increase between each price. So if you're Court, if your big product right now is eighteen hundred, you'd have some product at one hundred and eighty, and you might even have a product at eighteen dollars. And then your consulting might be whatever. You'd have a higher end, eighteen thousand, but that might not be a one time thing. It might be eighteen thousand over a few months or whatever it is, right? But you would wind up with eighteen dollars, one hundred and eighty, eighteen hundred, eighteen thousand. The numbers don't really matter. But that 10x is an interesting sort of model as you think about, so because then your question becomes, and even if you were only going to add one, right, your question becomes, all right, what would I sell for 180? And if you did split the community off separate, you might go, the community's 180, the course is 1800. I don't, 1800 is the course with the community, whatever. So from a pricing standpoint, in terms of you're thinking about like, where would this land? That's one way to think about it. Not that you need to have four or five different products, but that can be a way to think about 
where you're doing this. The big thing I would think about is if you're going to add a product and a lower price product, you want to be careful that you don't undercut your main product. So there has to be a clear differentiation and it has to be obvious who the higher price product is for versus the lower price product. And not just in terms of features, this has X, Y, and Z, this has the course and the community, whatever, but more importantly, the benefits. How will buying the higher price version get me a bigger result than buying the lower price prop? So you really want to differentiate those because otherwise you go, what you don't want to do is you don't want to wind up in a place where the only difference between the higher price and the lower price the higher one's better or more time or more stuff, but it's going to get you the same result. So the question becomes, what are the different results? And setting aside price points for a second, one product might be, however it's delivered, one product might be geared towards starting a community from scratch. You don't have one, you're going to start one. Another product might be you have a community and it's not really working or you want to revamp it or you want to whatever. There's a difference between start, I'm separating the difference between starting a community and growing a community. Yeah. And in that price wise, you'd have to figure that out. But that's what I mean about differentiation of products. It's differentiation of results and places people are in their journey. Another important question to ask yourself as you think about products and again, I do, I definitely think there's opportunity there. I think just the key is like, why are these different? Who are they for? How is the result different? You don't want to just go, oh, this one, you get community and all that other stuff. And the other, you just watch some videos by yourself. Because if you do that, one of two things is true. Either the videos by themselves aren't enough for me to get the result, which means that product's not good. Yeah. Or they are enough, which means the other one's overpriced because I don't really need it because I can just watch the videos. Yeah. So much better to have them be doing different things. The other thing I would say is whatever you're going to do, if you're going to create another product, even if it's relatively low touch and it's you put a little time to create it and then it's on demand or whatever, it's still going to require an investment of time. So let's say hypothetically, it's a 50, this is a random number, but let's say it's a 50 hour investment. The question to ask yourself is, will you get more from investing that 50 hours in building and launching and selling a new lower price product or investing that same 50 hours to get and or retain more members in your main product. And if your main product is gen from a pure revenue standpoint, if it's generating 10x what your lower product is, you need significantly more sales. That 50 hours needs to generate 10 times as many lower price sales as it would of the higher price. And that's not to discourage you from doing it because, again, I do think you have one product that's pretty high priced and you are probably leaving some opportunity on the table. But it's to think through really the opportunity cost of building it and launching it and that kind of stuff. The other thing is to look at are there revenue opportunities on the table within your newsletter, within other things that you're doing, whether it be advertising or sponsorship. Here's another example, right? If you took that 50 hours and instead of creating a new product, invested 50 hours in doing affiliate deals with people who could help sell and promote your thing for a cut, would that ultimately be better for your business than a new product, which you have to create and sell and promote and message and all that other stuff? I don't know. I think what your core question of, am I leaving opportunity on the table? You probably are. Does that have to be a lower price product? It could be. Doesn't necessarily have to be. I think that's where you want to think through really what that would be. A couple more things here. Ideally, though, if you do a lower price product, it would get people to the point where the higher price product makes sense. Yeah. So if the higher price product is, here's how you're going to grow your thing, and the lower price product is, here's how to start a community, that makes sense, right? They buy the lower price thing, they start their community, and now they really want to grow it and whatever. There's an alignment and connection there. The other thing I was thinking about is, and I touched on this a little bit before, your product right now is relatively for beginners, right? They're either just starting a community or they started it, but they're still trying to get it up and growing. But there might be a whole other audience of people whose communities are stalled or outdated. You know, yeah. They've been doing it for a while. Could you create a product that's a like community jumpstart or restart? 
or an audit or a troubleshooting, turn your community around? Is your community getting stale? Community refresh. There's a whole audience of community people that maybe you haven't really addressed yet that you might even be able to repackage some of your beginner starter growing advice, but just tailor it a little bit to the people whose communities have gone stale. So that's another Mm -hmm. angle in. And then the last thing I would say, and this is very similar to what I do with my skill sessions. So my skill sessions, for anyone that's listening and wants to check them out, you can go to joshspector.com slash sessions. But basically once every two months, I do a one hour Zoom video workshop presentation where I teach people how to do a specific skill. So one of them was how to get clients. One of them was how to grow your newsletter in five minutes a day, like very sort of specific stuff. And the way I sell them is they're, each one can be bought individually for $50, or you can subscribe to get all six, to get basically everything I've done so far in the archives. So six, because I've been doing it for a year, plus it's a year subscription. So you get the next six for right now, it's $150. It's a pretty good deal because I want the subscription, obviously, more so than the other thing. But both of those things sell. So I have a series of individual products because maybe the person who wants to know how to grow their newsletter doesn't care about getting clients, doesn't care about creating products or other sessions that I've done. So they're not going to subscribe. They're like, I don't, I only care, but I really want this newsletter thing. So they'll buy that. And then other people like a bunch of them and they'll subscribe. So you could very easily create, and again, I only do six a year, so it's not crazy time consuming. And the production of them is literally, I create a PowerPoint presentation and record a video of me walking through it for people. So it's not that time consuming. You could do that. Let's say you did that and you did six of those sort of one-off workshops a year. Your members, your annual members get all those free. So you've created another reason for people to join. Yeah. I'm and already doing that. <laughs> yeah. But are you selling them individually? No. See, there you go. So if you break some of those off, you may already, and it sounds like you do, already have individual lower price products. And guess what happens? When people watch, the same thing will happen for you as happens for me. They buy one of those sessions, they watch it, they go, wow, that was really good. Now I want to subscribe. And I actually, I don't really publicize this much, but I actually offer to refund people's original purchase if they want to upgrade. So if you're listening to this, you can buy my skill session and then you'll get a thing (laughs) that says, Hey, I'll give you your $50 back and you can upgrade to the full subscription. So those one-off products become not only a revenue generator for you repurposing what you're already doing, they also become a sales promotion vehicle for your bigger products. Yeah. And I'm guessing- Those live? Like you, you yeah, charge for- I do. Well, so here's the, here's the other thing I do. Subscribers get to attend live and there's Q&A. So I do them live. People come on, they get to ask questions at the end, give them some specific help and stuff. So that's another perk of being a subscriber versus just buying the one-off video on demand. But yeah, so you could absolutely do that and think about how much easier it is to get someone to buy your $1,800 membership after they've watched a workshop you did that was really good. What's interesting is so many people that do that, there's nothing wrong with sharing free excerpts, but if you have it as a relatively low price The kind of person that's ever going to consider buying an $1,800 subscription to you or membership, they're not going to balk at $50 for a topic that's interesting to them. If people are going to go, I'm not paying $50 for that, they were never going to buy from you anyway, right? I know. So yeah, so that's, I would look at stuff you already have in there. And what's nice about that is you don't have to do anything. You set up a sales page. Yeah. I'm hoping I could do something like that. I was also thinking about something you said earlier, like niching down the audience and creating these resources for them. So like you mentioned like podcasts and like podcasts who are podcasters who are starting a community or coaches who are going from one-on-one to group coaching and like how they should think about community and doing that as I could even do a live workshop to just to see yep. how that goes and see who and shows up it. and then sell do it. Do a live workshop, tape it. And if it's good, turn around and sell it. I love that yeah. because the other thing is if you want to get to where you're running Facebook ads or paid promotion or whatever, what's great about the building a membership for podcasters, building a membership for newsletter creators, building a membership for thought leaders, building a membership for whatever, is the marketing of that becomes really easy 
because it's right. poor. It's so hyper specific to them. And the information won't ultimately be all that different. No, right? there's like little things, but it'll yeah. generally be, yeah. Yeah. So and you're, you're speaking to them. It. And so, yeah, I, to me, that makes a lot of sense. Cool. Ho hopefully now, other than changing your website and rolling out new products and a million other things, you're well on your way. But ho hopefully you yeah. found this helpful. I have a year's wor worth of growth stuff to do now. So it's awesome. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> you said in the beginning, this is just in time for planning for next year. So now you've got plenty yeah. of stuff to plan. Awesome. I am looking forward to seeing what you come up with.